Hello friends, this video is on a reasoning question. Let's understand the question and what is the answer. Uh, a bodybuilder complains of warmth in the body or heat generation in the body after eating fish. He eats a lot of fish and after eating that, he feels warmth or heat generation in the body. Explain why or explain what is the physiologic basis. Uh, the, the simple one-liner, one-line answer would be diet induced thermogenesis that is uh, after eating diet there is heat generation in the body and uh, therefore the warmth is felt but it requires a certain explanation for uh, four or five marks so let's see what can be the explanation now we are talking about the metabolic processes uh, as a uh, as metabolism occurs energy metabolism and there is a byproduct in the form of heat. Heat is generated in the body as a byproduct of energy metabolism and uh, ATP generation. Uh, basically, there are three uh, reasons why there is ATP breakdown and heat generation. A, the BMR, the basal metabolic rate, you know, cells are under basal conditions. They are uh, constantly in this energy turnover process and uh, that generates uh, that breaks down the ATPs and generates heat. Uh, you know, there are hormones that increase the BMR, therefore they generate heat in the body. Physical activity, this also generates the heat in the body. And the third one is we are looking at diet induced thermogenesis. So let's have a look at it carefully and uh, uh, in detail. Name itself tells you diet induced thermogenesis. That is whenever we eat the diet, there is heat generation in the body that is thermogenesis also called as specific dynamic action of the foodstuffs. Let's understand this. Why do we eat foods? To generate energy in the body, to generate ATPs in the body. But before the foodstuffs could generate any ATPs eventually, they first break down the existing ATPs. That is called as specific dynamic action of the foodstuffs and as a byproduct of this uh, uh, ATP breakdown, there is heat generation in the body. So, it is called as diet induced thermogenesis, also sometimes called as postprandial heat generation. So, first point that you can write is that the diet and the nutrients in the diet they generate ATPs in the body, but before they could generate ATPs through various metabolic processes, they actually break down the existing ATPs in the body. And this breakdown of ATPs uh, generates heat as a byproduct. All right, uh, this is over and above the BMR. How much is it? How much is the total ATP breakdown by the diet itself? It is about 10 to 15 percent of the total daily daily energy expenditure. So it's not uh, negligible. It's quite uh, quite a uh, appreciable amount. 10 to 15 percent of the total energy expenditure daily is in the form of uh, this a specific dynamic action of the foodstuffs. So foodstuffs, when we eat them every time, they break down uh, the ATPs before they could finally generate the ATPs. How do you measure this, uh, the ATP consumption and heat generation? It is measured by a procedure called as indirect calorimetry, where uh, the procedure is based on the oxygen consumption per unit time. And you can add this to your answer. There are two phases of this diet-induced thermogenesis or ATP breakdown by the diet. Cephalic phase, you know that. Cephalic means uh, cephalic phase means whenever we think about the food or we see the food or we uh, smell the foods, there is secretion of certain enzymes or, or uh, juices in the body and uh, like salivary juice or gastric juice and that itself breaks down some ATPs. And then there is GI phase, gastrointestinal phase where digestion now, this is the most important part that you should know. This is, uh, this is uh, a main part in your answer. Digestion, absorption, metabolism and storage of these nutrients requires ATPs and therefore these processes 
will break down the ATPs and then eventually the ATPs will be generated from the nutrients. Now in this GI phase there are two components, uh, obligatory component which is for digestion, transport and storage. This is a must, this is a certain fraction which has to happen and that is called as obligatory component. I'll just give you an example, glucose absorption from the digestive tract. When we eat carbohydrates, they are first converted into simple forms like glucose and then glucose absorption requires the transporter SGLT. Now this SGLT is a secondary active transporter. It is based on the sodium potassium pump, which is an ATPase. So ATPs will be broken down just for the transport of glucose from the lumen into the bloodstream. So similarly, digestion, transport, and storage of the nutrients will require or will cause certain amount of ATP breakdown. And then there is facultative component which will eventually generate heat as a byproduct. Now the most important part of this answer is, look there are these nutrients mainly carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Which one, which one of them produces greatest amount of heat? The answer is proteins. So please remember specific dynamic action of the foodstuffs is sometimes also called as specific dynamic action of the proteins. Why? Because proteins are the uh, nutrients which maximally cause the ATP breakdown and heat generation. Why is that? It is because those carbon skeletons uh, in the proteins, they need to be processed through various metabolic pathways to finally generate the ATPs and since these carbon skeletons are being transferred through various metabolic pathways that is the cause for ATP breakdown. So eventually it will be stored and it will uh, be able to generate the ATPs but before that it breaks down the ATPs for all these processes. So remember uh, maximum amount of ATP breakdown and heat generation, ATP breakdown and its byproduct is heat generation is for the protein rich diets and therefore that gives us the answer fish being the protein rich uh, or uh, bodybuilders also often uh, complain that after taking protein shakes or protein supplements they feel heat generation in the body so this is the answer for that uh, heat generation by the proteins because of their ATP breakdown during these processes. So actually the answer was just a one-liner specific dynamic action of the proteins but we explained it in little more detail so that a five marks answer can be written in detail. So uh, many more such things will come uh, regularly on our channel. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe now.